Chapter 14, Information and Measuring Tools. This chapter reviews the MicroStation information tool and measuring tools, including the element information tools, the measuring tools, and the message center. Placing elements at precise sizes and locations requires a way to measure and analyze the results. This becomes more important as the user learns construction techniques that involve the interaction of different elements and tools. This chapter discusses the information and measuring tools along with their settings. The first tool I'm going to discuss is the element information tool. Now we mentioned this earlier in the, the course. It can be accessed from the information tool button on the primary toolbar or from the element menu information or by selecting an element and selecting properties you'll get an abbreviated information tool dialog. Let's go ahead and open the one from the primary toolbar. When you have no element selected you'll see a blank element information dialog. And much like the tool settings dialog it'll change whenever you select a different element. Let's look at some of the information in the tool. I've selected an edge of pavement line you can see the color, line style, and weight listed. And you'll notice that it says by level, so you can tell that that is indeed the by level color, weight, and line style for that specific level. It tells you what type of info, uh, it tells you what type of element it is. Also, whether it's primary or construction class, whether it belongs to a template. Transparency, priority, gives you some general geometry information as far as start and end and a length so you see the length measurement right there gives you the angle or direction that it's traveling and the delta x and delta y you don't see a delta zero because this is a 2d drawing and then once again it lists the total length the extended information will also tell you about line style parameters this is where you can manually change the line style scale so if for whatever reason the line style is not scaling exactly correctly in a drawing and you, ne you need to adjust it, uh, even though you've got annotation scale on, annotation lock, you can adjust that scale right here if things just aren't looking correctly. And much like the toolboxes, if you right click on any of these sections, you can enable and disable the different portions of those sections. And that's the element information tool. There is a whole selection of measurement tools that are available from the drawing task. It's the next to the last section under the F.Plans development. Let me go ahead and right click and open measure as a toolbox. Just like all toolboxes, you can enable and disable the different tools. The measurement tools let the user make real world measurements based on drawing elements. The measurements made with these tools are displayed in the status bar in the units and format set in the design file settings dialog under working units. The microstation steps for measuring are similar to the steps for placing elements. First, choose the tool to be used, and then follow the prompts to choose the necessary elements or locations involved in the measurement. First tool is the measure distance tool. It allows you to measure the distance along an element, cumulative distance from a data point, perpendicular distance between an element and a data point, or the distance between two elements. Tool settings report the last distance measured. See this is set for between points. So I can measure between two points. That's 100 feet. It displays in the measure distance dialog as well as the status bar. You measure along an element. You start with a snap point and then it allows you to decide how far along this element you'd like to measure enter data point. You can snap to any point along there. And that's another function with AccuSnap and the snaps. You can measure perpendicular. So if I want to see the distance between this and this point, the perpendicular distance is displayed right there. Minimum and maximum between will measure the minimum distance between two elements and the maximum. We'll see that in the exercise. It's a little difficult to describe, but It'll make sense when you see it. The next tool is the Measure Radius tool. The measure Radius tool measures the radius of elements, circular arcs, circles, cones, cylinders, or the axes of ellipses or elliptical arcs. 
the tool settings reports the last measure primary radius and diameter. Measure angle between measures the angle between two lines. So where was that uh, line we were just looking at? Gives us the angle in degrees. Measure length of an element allows you to simply select the element itself and get the length. You're not drawing between two points, you're measuring the length of the actual element. Measure area does exactly that. It measures square feet. You can measure by element, so for example if you had a closed shape, that'll give you the area in square feet. You can measure by intersection, union, or difference, much like the create region tools. You can measure by flood. See I clicked inside of the shape. And you can measure by points. So if you want to draw around a shape. And there you go. And we saw how all of these measurements not only show up in the measurement dialog, but in the status bar as well. Exercise 14.1, using the element information tool. First, let's locate that cross-hatched area that we created earlier. You can select the element selector. We're still inside DSGN RDO1, which is in the roadway folder in your data set. And I've located the cross-hatched area. And from the primary toolbar located at the top of the application window, select the references icon. In the next chapter we're going to talk about references, but I've just selected the references icon. I'm going to expand this window a little bit and you see the column with the display option. Let's uncheck all of those references just for a little while. Now use the window area tool to zoom into the area near station 232, which now you can't see because we turned off the reference file, but the crosshatch area that we were working on earlier. You're going to select crosshatched area and click the element information. You'll see that it defines the shape. You see it's on the text tables level for whatever reason because that was accidentally the active level we were on and it happened to be the same color yellow as the uh, element we were working with. So that is something we do need to change and according to the exercise, we're going to change that to the curb back level. And you see you can actually change the element information using the element information dialog. Alright, we're going to measure some distances. Let's go back to your references dialog and look for Topo RDO2 and turn that back on. Let's do a fit view real quick. It looks like Topo RDO2 is way down here at the end of the project. And we are looking for a building. And the building is towards the end of the reference, beyond the end of the alignment. So let's see. It's a building that's at an angle. Oh, here we are. So we're looking for this building right here. I'm going to turn off the trees by right pressing and selecting turn off level by element. That way I can kind of see the buildings a little bit better. We're looking at this building right here. And we're going to use the measuring tools. We're going to select measure distance. Select between points. And notice how as we select the points it tells us the distance, the last distance, and the total. So for example, from here to here, it's a total of 1.6 feet, but we've measured a total of 39 so far. It's just like SmartLine, it's still connected there. And as you go, you can measure the perimeter and see the measurements for each individual segment as you measure them. To exit the measurement tool, you just right click reset to exit. Now we're going to measure a long element. So I've selected the method as a long element. I'm going to pick a different point and start from here and you see how it draws a little highlight and you can see you can stop at any of these points and 
enter a data point and it'll give you the distance. And you can continuously measure along the element. Okay, now we're going to measure perpendicular. So let's change the method to perpendicular. And I'd like to measure from this line right here, which is topo miscellaneous, to the corner of this structure. So you see that's perpendicular. I can measure the distance perpendicular from the topo miscellaneous line to the building structure. Okay, what about the minimum and maximum distance between? I select one element and then another, and it finds the minim minimum distance and measures it for me. I switch this to maximum distance, and it finds the, in this case, not recognizing the building as an actual building, but recognizing it as an element, it chooses the furthest point of the building from that distance. Let's measure some radiuses. Radii, radii. We're going to zoom out and locate this intersection right here and select the measure radius tool and we're just going to select these arcs and you see it gives us the radius of the arcs so we could use this to measure turning radiuses you can measure your curb radiuses or edge of pavement radiuses and that's the radius measurement tool now let's go with the measure angle tool Let's go back to your references dialog and turn on the alignment. And I want to measure the angle of this alignment. I'm pretty sure it's 90 degrees. In fact, there's a label here saying it's 90 degrees, 23 minutes, 10 seconds. But I'm not sure. So I'm going to check that label by selecting this element, selecting that element, and it tells me indeed the radius is 90 degrees, 23 minutes, 9 seconds, point six four, etc. So it did round it up for that label. So labels close enough. What about the measure length tool? Let's use the measure length tool and we're going to measure the length of this crosswalk right here. That's where they're going to put a crosswalk. You see all you have to do is click on one of these lines and it populates the length and direction of the entire line. Let's use the measure area tool. Let's go back to that hatching, the cross hatching area and we're going to measure this using points. So just like measuring distance with points, this time we are measuring area with the points. And reset, and as soon as you reset it tells you the square feet. And that is the microstation measurement tools.